the course of history has often been shaped by rivalries between states and countries. Some were limited contests for trade, while others were epic battles to death between the world's greatest powers. Some of the fiercest rivals of yesteryear are staunch allies today, it just took a few hundred years and a whole lot of battles to work things out, this collection looks at some of history's most notable rivalries, from the great struggles of the ancient world to the First World War. 1. England and France were at war on and off for 700 years, Anglo-French wars began in the 12th century and didn't really let up until the fall of Napoleon. The first conflicts were over the English possession of Normandy in northern France and escalated from there. France was a long-term ally of Scotland and helped maintain the kingdom's independence from England, which in turn prevented England from concentrating its full force against either foe. At the height of the Hundred Years' War, which actually lasted 116 years, the English held significant portions of modern-day France. Although England enjoyed a spectacular victory at Agincourt, the French ultimately emerged on top. Only Calais remained in English hands by 1453. It would be a full century before the French took the last English stronghold on the continent, in the many Italian wars of the 16th century, England typically got involved on whatever side opposed France, helping to thwart the long-term ambitions of the French crown. In return, the French lent a hand to the Dutch in the Second Anglo-Dutch War. In the 18th century, the two nations exchanged victories, the British kicked the French out of Canada, and 20 years later, the French helped the American colonies break away from Britain. During the Napoleonic Wars, the British were one of the few mainstays in the ever-shifting coalitions formed against France. After the final French defeat at Waterloo, Britain and France became allies rather than enemies. They fought together in the Opium Wars, the Crimean War, and both World Wars. Although just for old time's sake, the British destroyed a French fleet docked in Algeria in 1940 to prevent it from falling into Axis hands. 2. Rome and Carthage waged three epic wars for dominance of the Mediterranean, the Romans used to refer to the Mediterranean as Mare Nostrum, our sea, but it only became theirs after a trilogy of conflicts with the near equal might of Carthage. The first of the three wars was a grinding 23-year conflict mostly fought in Sicily and at sea. At first, the Romans were fairly clueless when it came to naval combat and the expert sailors of Carthage made short work of the Roman fleets sent against them. A key innovation, the Corvus, allowed the Romans to simply board and overwhelm Carthaginian ships. The Second Punic War saw Rome suffer a series of catastrophic losses at the hands of the Carthaginian general Hannibal. Through sheer force of will, the Romans eventually managed to overcome Carthage and the emergence of their own genius, Scipio Africanus, who allowed Rome to finally prevail, although neutered by a harsh peace deal, the prospect of a recovery deeply worried the Roman statesman Cato the Elder. He took to ending every public speech with, Cathrago de Lenda est, Carthage must be destroyed. The third and final war was a far briefer affair than the first two almighty struggles. Rome provoked the final showdown through a series of increasingly outrageous demands. Even though Carthage was no match for Rome at this point, the city rallied for a brave but futile defense. In 146 BCE the city fell and Carthage was burned to the ground. Although it would be rebuilt a century or so later, the city would never again challenge Rome for control of the Mediterranean. 3. Russia and the Ottomans fought a dozen wars over 500 years, as expansive Eurasian empires, Russia and the Ottomans were always going to have many enemies at the edges of their vast domains. Few were as intense as their own rivalry from the 16th century to World War I, the empires fought 12 wars in all, with Russia the victor in all but two conflicts. The two Ottoman victories came as part of larger entanglements, one of them during the Great Northern War, when the Russians were also at war with half of Europe. The Ottomans negotiated a favorable deal and left the conflict in 1711. The second Ottoman triumph over the Russians was as an ally of Britain and France during the Crimean War. Worried by Russian expansion, the British and French put aside centuries of animosity to aid the ailing Ottomans against the Russians, a Russian-led coalition defeated the Ottomans in 1878 in the Tenth Russo-Turkish War, also called Turco-Russian, and helped the Balkan states gain independence. 
The final confrontation between the two powers was as part of World War I. With other more pressing priorities elsewhere, the combat between the old rivals was largely restricted to the Caucasus. Both Russia and the Ottomans managed to finish the war on the losing side. Russia dropped out in March 1918, while the Ottomans gave up on October 31 that same year, just a few weeks shy of WWI's official end. 4. Russia and Poland have been at odds for a thousand years, depending on how you elect to define Russia, the first conflicts between Russia and Poland go all the way back to the 10 and 11th centuries and the struggles between the Duchy of Poland and Kievan Rus. Hostilities picked back up towards the end of the 16th century when the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth participated in the Livonian War. As Russia endured an especially difficult time appropriately named the Time of Troubles at the turn of the 17th century, the Commonwealth backed a series of pretenders to the Russian throne who all claimed to be a slain prince named Dmitri. After the formation of the Romanov dynasty and the end of the Troubles, the tables turned and the Russians went on the offensive. Alongside Austria and Prussia, the burgeoning Russian Empire swallowed up the entirety of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth over the course of three partitions from 1772 to 1795. For well over a century, Poland ceased to exist. The Treaty of Versailles would ultimately reverse the annexations after World War I. In 1919 the Second Polish Republic found itself surrounded by hostile neighbors and had to fight for its existence. Yet another Russian incursion took place in 1920 but the overextended Red Army was beaten back by Marshal Polsudski's, pictured, forces. Poland's existence and borders were secured in 1921 but precariously. Sandwiched between two hostile powers, Poland's geopolitical position in the interwar years was one of history's worst. When the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact was signed, Poland's fate was sealed. After the Second World War, Poland struggled under the thumb of the Soviet Union for decades, finally breaking away from the Eastern Bloc in 1991. 5. Scotland and England went from bitter enemies to bitter allies, Scotland and England fought two lengthy and destructive wars of independence in the 13th and 14th centuries. The decisive Battle of Bannockburn is shown at the end of the movie Braveheart, but this was a long way from the end of the conflicts. It would be a further 14 years before England finally recognized the independence of Scotland in 1328. This peace lasted a grand total of four years. The Second Independence War was similarly protracted and once again ended with Scotland holding on to its independence. In general, the English got the better of the pitched battles, but no matter how many invasions were launched, they never could win a truly decisive victory over the Scots. Thanks to French support, Scottish independence was confirmed, for a price, with the Treaty of Berwick, the battles between the two enemies continued into the 15th and 16th centuries, generally as border skirmishes and the prize of Berwick, which changed hands more than a dozen times. Scottish kings didn't fare too well personally in conflicts with England, David II was taken prisoner in the Second War of Independence, James II died during the Siege of Roxburgh, and James IV and much of the nobility perished at the 1515 Battle of Flodden, one of the most disastrous battles Scotland ever fought. Henry VIII decided his son Edward should marry Scotland's Queen Mary and wouldn't take no for an answer. The rough wooing was an unsuccessful campaign waged to force the Scots into a marriage alliance and to break off relations with France. It would ultimately be a Scottish rather than English monarch who would bring the two kingdoms together. In 1603, Elizabeth I passed without an heir, leaving James VI to take the English throne. A century later, the two parliaments unified and created the entity of Great Britain in 1707. 6. The Habsburgs and Ottomans battled one another for 265 years, the Habsburgs and the Ottomans were two of the most powerful entities in the early modern world. The Habsburgs dominated European politics with a stranglehold on the Holy Roman Empire and multiple monarchies across the continent. The Ottomans rose from one of the many small Turkish beyliks, overthrew the Byzantine Empire and expanded into southern Europe in the 15th century. With the conquest of Hungary, the Muslim Ottomans were on the very doorstep of the Catholic Habsburgs. It would take more than two and a half centuries to settle the score, 
the Ottomans twice reached the very gates of Vienna, but were ultimately foiled on both occasions. Bad weather persuaded the first expedition to turn back, while the late intervention of the Polish hussars turned the tide in 1683. The wars were also fought at sea, with a Habsburg-led coalition scoring a particularly important victory at Lepanto in 1571, pictured. Generally, the first hundred or so years were inconclusive, the appropriately named Long Turkish War of 1593-1606 accomplished nothing beyond adding 90,000 bodies to the casualty list. After the second failure to take Vienna, the tide swung toward the Habsburgs thanks to the dynamic leadership of Prince Eugene of Savoy. The last major conflict ended in 1791, a largely inconclusive affair between two powers in decline. 7. Denmark and Sweden fought many times, usually over Norway, and usually without a decisive result, the exact number of conflicts between Denmark and Sweden is quite difficult to pin down pre-1523, as the earlier versions of Denmark and Sweden weren't as clearly defined. By some estimates, 30 conflicts have occurred between the two Scandinavian countries, if clashes from the early Middle Ages and before are included. After the Swedish War of Liberation from the Kalmar Union, at least 11 conflicts took place between Denmark and Sweden. The Northern Seven Years' War between Sweden and Denmark accomplished precisely nothing, but the 17th century sequel set the modern borders of Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. The Danes were quick to join forces with any enemy of Sweden, and at that time, there were plenty to choose from. The last conflicts took place during the Napoleonic Wars. Denmark was an ally of France, while the Swedes stood with the British-led coalition. Sweden tried and failed to invade Norway, while Denmark tried and failed to regain lost territory from Sweden. The very last battle between the great rivals took place in the War of the Six Coalition, 1813-14, with a rather anticlimactic clash between two small armies, the Swedish cavalry managed to force the Danes into retreat. At the peace treaty, the Swedes got the prize of Norway, so often the cause of animosity between the two states. 8. The Ottomans and Persians waged multiple wars across three centuries, although the Ottoman expansion into Europe tends to get more attention, the main target of the Ottomans' considerable military was actually aimed at their eastern rivals, the Safavid Persians. The Ottomans gained the upper hand against the Safavids in the first major conflict, 1532-55, but a decisive victory remained elusive as the Persians adopted a scorched-earth strategy the two powers traded victories in the second long conflict before the Ottomans once again prevailed in 1590. The territorial gains were largely reversed by a Persian victory in 1618. The peace deal lasted a mere five years before the last major conflict of the 17th century settled the borders of Western Asia for a century. A new series of conflicts broke out in the 18th century, and though the Safavids collapsed in 1736, their successors were no less bellicose toward the Ottomans. The latter conflicts between the Ottomans and Persians were largely inconclusive, with a final and lasting peace agreed to in 1823. 9. Russia and Sweden battled for dominance of the Baltic, hostilities between Sweden and Russia go back to the Middle Ages, but the conflicts really took off in the early modern period. As Sweden began to overshadow its arch-nemesis Denmark, another rivalry formed with Russia. Initially a series of inconclusive border skirmishes between two rising powers in the region, the conflicts increased in intensity and frequency in the 17th and 18th centuries, the Great Northern War was the longest and most costly of the conflicts. The Swedish King Charles XII was a formidable military commander who won a spectacular victory at Holoxen, now Belarus, defeating an army twice as large as his own. However, Charles couldn't follow up his initial successes and later perished in battle. The 21 years of hostilities saw other powers drawn into the war, Great Britain had the unusual distinction of fighting for both sides at different points. Denmark was, as ever, a willing ally against Sweden, dropping in and out of the fighting. In the end, Russia emerged victoriously and became the new dominant power in the Baltic, the fantastically named War of the Hats, 1741-43, didn't actually have anything to do with headwear, but was a Swedish political faction that wanted to regain the territories lost in the Great Northern War. 
The hats were promptly devoured by the superior Russian forces and even more territory was lost in the defeat. The Finnish war finished hostilities between Russia and Sweden in 1809. A relatively minor part of the larger Napoleonic Wars, Sweden ceded Finland to the Russian Empire. This conflict was also the last time a battle took place within Swedish territory. 10. Venice and Genoa battled for trade supremacy at sea, in the Middle Ages, Venice and Genoa were two exceptionally wealthy and powerful republics on either side of the Italian peninsula. Both were major trading powers in the Mediterranean, with expansive trade empires stretched across the region. The rivals fought four conflicts for dominance of trade in the Mediterranean in the 13th and 14th centuries. Even though the two cities are less than 250 miles apart, almost all combat was at sea. Some naval clashes involving hundreds of galleys took place as far away as the Bosphorus and the Black Sea. Even when they weren't officially at war, raiders regarded the other city's ships as fair game. The Venetians gained the upper hand in the first conflict, the second and third were inconclusive. In the fourth and final war, Venice narrowly avoided capture with victory at Chiaja in 1380. Although Venice won a great victory, the Republic was ultimately defeated by the Austrian and Hungarian allies of Genoa and sued for peace the following year. The Treaty of Turin, 1381, brought an end to the formal hostilities, but the republics remained rivals. Venice lost significant territories in the peace, but soon recovered from the setbacks to once again become one of the Mediterranean's foremost powers in the early modern period. For Genoa, the fourth conflict proved to be the Republic's undoing as a major power in the region. Naval losses meant Genoa couldn't protect maritime trade in the eastern Mediterranean, and it lost ground to Venice and the Ottomans. 11. Rome fought Rome countless times, although Rome had some epic rivalries across its centuries of existence, its biggest threat came from within. The sheer number of internal conflicts is difficult to fathom. Even the very founding myth hints at infighting, the city founded by Romulus and Remus took its name after Romulus slew his own brother, perhaps the most tumultuous era of all was the series of civil wars in the first century BCE, which ultimately brought the Roman Republic to an end. The period began with Sulla's power struggle with Gaius Marius, and ended with the ultimate triumph of Octavian over Mark Antony. Octavian became Augustus Caesar, the first emperor of Rome, though he never actually assumed that title. Augustus had learned from the mistakes of his adoptive father, Julius Caesar, and avoided the appearance of holding ultimate power. The switch from republic to empire did little to quell the incessant civil wars, if anything, the new power structure encouraged them. Supreme power lay just a successful coup away. There were five emperors in 193 CE alone. In the rather understated crisis of the 3rd century, an astonishing 26 claimants battled for power between the years 235 to 284 CE. The chaos ended with Emperor Diocletian creating a more stable power structure, the Tetrarchy, to stabilize the fractured empire, of course, nobody could stop Romans from fighting Romans for very long. And the system crumbled shortly after Diocletian's passing. After the Roman Empire split into West and East, the civil wars continued in the 4th and 5th centuries until the Western half collapsed entirely. The Eastern Roman Empire, better known as the Byzantine Empire, lasted much longer but continued the proud tradition of fighting amongst themselves every few years. Thank you for joining us on this fascinating journey through history, exploring 11 of the longest and most intense rivalries that have shaped the world. From ancient civilizations to modern times, these conflicts have left an indelible mark on cultures, societies, and the course of human events. As we close the chapter on this exploration, we invite you to reflect on the lessons we can draw from these historical rivalries. Whether it's the struggle for power, territory, or ideological differences, these stories remind us of the complexities of human relationships and the enduring impact of rivalry on our collective narrative. If you enjoyed this deep dive into history, don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe, and ring the notification bell to stay updated on our future explorations. Feel free to share your thoughts and insights in the comments below. History is a vast tapestry of stories, 
and we look forward to unraveling more threads with you in our upcoming videos, thank you for being a part of our community, and until next time, keep exploring, learning, and embracing the rich tapestry of our shared past.